Lights, please. Before we get into today's lesson, I love you. Because you didn't realize this one simple truth. You did that to me. Change ratios. Again, change dimensions. Change ratios. Let me give you an example here. So, you guys probably in, I don't know what grade you deal with measurements. What is that, first or second? Kindergarten? Start dealing with measurements? Okay. However it is, I like you to trace the one foot here and trace 12 inches. So many years ago, regardless of what grade it was, you guys figured out one foot equals 12 inches. Now watch carefully, guys. Underline or highlight that word linear. If you go in a hardware store, And if they're like buying the rope, they won't say, I need 100 feet of rope. They will use the term, I need 100 linear feet. So what does it stands? Linear stands for a what? A one. And the reason why a good contractor will use the word linear because that specifically designates we're in one dimension. Because that one to 12 ratio only works in one dimension. Go like that. There's a reason why. All right, 1D. And you guys learned a long time ago, one linear foot is 12 inches. Now, come down here, and I'd like you to shade a square foot. Shade it. Square foot now, and then shade it over here. I want you to fill out that blank go. Do that yourself. I'm going to land on someone in five seconds. Don't say that loud. Jen, would you get that second blank? One foot squared is how many inches, sir? Huh? Excellent. Yes. Okay, thumbs up if you did 144. Okay. And that's because we've moved into two dimensions. So watch this ratio. We're in two dimensions, which means this. There's a pattern there. When you change dimensions, you change ratio. Okay, so I want you to imagine this is a star, so it's not five inches. Okay, now pretend we have some sort of like space agey thing, like you can see when you, like, uh, what's his name? Iron Man does with his, Jared, Jared, whatever it was, and he'd be like, here's a hand like this. Jarvis, Jarvis, yes, sorry about that. Let's get our mythology corrected. Um, so, like, you guys like this with his hands, and all of a sudden you see stuff in 3D, right? So, like this, ready? Pull your square foot into a cube, go whoop. Okay, can you visualize that now? Okay, you got your own person, Jarvis, there. And so, now, look here, that's one foot by one foot, depth, one foot. Figure out the square inches, go. I'm going to land on someone in five seconds. Okay. What'd you get now? Okay. What are we going to do to the 12? Maybe you can just tell me that. Huh? Power of three. Yes. Who has it number? You get Jalen. Yes. What is it? Yes, it is. Okay. So we are. Here we are. 1,000. 728 inches cubed, which watch carefully. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Ready. Have a short discussion with a neighbor. What pattern do you see going on there? Go. What pattern do you see? Go. When you change dimensions, you change your conversion. And they're calculating 70 square feet. 
Divide by you want that work done in your house. Okay, ready. Grab the can out. Grab the can. Okay. I like you to hold the can. Put the can in the middle. Vertically. Ready? Everyone physically trace the height on the can. Go. Let me trace it. Sideways. Now take the can sideways. And now hold it like this. Repeat again. Say height. That distance between the bases. Got it? Okay, that's super important. Does it count out? Height does not mean vertical. Two, base does not mean bottom. In this shape, I like you to shade the two bases. Oh, shade them. Shade them quickly, guys. Follow along. It's only take us about 10 minutes if you stay right with me. For a prism and a cylinder, the bases, box that word two. There's two of them, always. There's two of them, always. How many bases are there in a prism and a cylinder? Two. And they have the quality CPR. Write them down if you remember. Go. CPR. This is on the videos. I know that. I'm using the acronym. Close. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's your first word. Our first C word. They are congruent. Second C word. They are parallel to each other. Third, they're connected by nothing but rectangles. C, P, R. Okay, turn on the lights because we need to use CR objects here. Everyone in your team, you have a physical object, get it in your hands. Now, if it's a small object, you see If it's a small object, you see two fingers. If it's a large object, use your fingertips. I want you to hold this in such a way that your fingers are only touching the base. We'll do one each. Okay? Go. 
Look at that. Look at your can. Look at your can. Copy your dimensions down. Get your can. Look at your can. Copy them down. six steps long, which means if you follow my system that I give you, the likelihood of you getting it correct goes way up. That's why I got like always on my bees. But those of you who are careless about following my steps, there's a multitude of things. If you mess one tiny little thing up, it gets the whole thing wrong. So be very unconscious. That's why I like you to say the business. Go, shade. Shade. Always get in the habit of shading your bases. Check. Two, you find the area of your base, and you actually write out the equation. This is a circle out loud. That's area equals. Boom. Good. You write it down. Now we circle our radius here. You can take it to the second decimal place. Okay, square it. You're going to take it to the second decimal place. And we use a capital B there. I'm going to keep it in pi form. I'll change it at the very end. Okay, please use a capital B. Capital B means area of the base. Capital B means what? So lowercase b is just a single dimensional length. Now we write the equation out for volume, which is base times what? Mm -hmm. Which is the distance between the bases. So now we circle plug check. Circle, pick it up. Physically, notice I'm circling. One, five, six, pi times height. Which, whoops, plug it in. Got to get that plug part going on there. Pick up that. Okay, you do your own math. I like you to write it in both pi form and non pi form. Go. Pi form and non pi form. Take it to the second decimal place. Yes, sir. Um, I th look at the height of your can. What's a quarter of a dollar? Got it. What that can says one half. Oh, okay. That's, that's cubed for both of them because it's volume. All righty, guys. Put the can in the tub and get out the hexagonal 
prism. Start copying down the dimensions. Go. Get out the hexagonal prism. Pass it around. Copy down the dimensions. Go. Yes. All righty, guys. Shade base equations. Circle plug chug. Shade your bases. Shade your bases. Now we're going to write the area equation for that base, which is a regular hexagon. That's pa over 2. I'm going to freeze that. I'm not home. Quickly, guys, you should beat me. I'm going to show you the answer in about 10 seconds, but you should beat me. Now we'll do volume. Our volume, again, is capital B base times height. So we physically pick it up. I circle B, I plug it in right here. You're going to try to do this without a calculator, friends. Our height is not, our height is distance between the bases. Do this without a calculator because you're smart like that. I'll show you a trick. Ready? What's 4 times 2? Okay, so that's going to be 0. 0.8. And then we go like this. What is 4 times 10? Try it again. Yeah. 40. And then our units cubed. And then you label that with the V equals so that you know the difference between base and volume. Okay. Put the hexagon away. All righty, guys. Now, this is kind of fun drawing, but if you watch, what you do is you drag the edge. This is one of your bases. Drag the edges backwards. Keep those lines parallel. Keep them parallel. To the best of your ability, keep them parallel. Now, I'm going to color code them for you so it's easy to see. Then you keep these guys parallel. Try to keep these pieces parallel. You might need to erase. That's why you have erasers. Those of you who are like, I can't draw to save my life, guess what? You're actually going to get better at this. You will get better. Now, as part of 3D drawing, the edges you can't to dot because you technically can't see them. For example, this back edge, you can't see it. And this edge, you can't see. And this edge, you can't see. So the edges you can't see, you dot. Yes, the drawing is a bit tricky. You'll you'll will get better at this. If you need to back to the drawing, some of you need to physically get up to the Now, again, here is shade your faces. Everybody shade the two bases. Remember those shapes are congruent. Parallel There's two of them. They're congruent. Okay, let's see if you shade it correctly. These guys, it's the L's because those are the only ones that are congruent, exactly congruent. You have a set, a parallel, and a connected. 
Now, in order to find that, let's pull out this shape. It's a composite shape. So come over here. There's not a single equation here. That's a composite shape. I'm going to freeze this. I want you to find the area of that composite shape. Go. Find the area. You have your dimensions physically on the step, so pass it around. Guys, physically pass it around. I'm going to show you in 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, check. All right. Now you label that with a B, capital B. Now we write our volume equation down, base times the height. So we bring that base, circles, 972. Physically trace your height, which is the distance between the bases. The height is, out loud. Okay, remember. Okay, guys. Listen, if you have any versions of big numbers and decimals, get over it. This entire lesson is big numbers and decimals. Okay, so we come over here, double check, 36 times 972, and 34,992 millimeters. All right, ready, get out the starburst. You should not be eating that. I, I said starkest for some reason. Here's the deal. Ready? Individually, right? 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 help each other. This is individual. Hang on just a second. I need to stop my recording. I'll